Blog Talk Radio. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I am your host, Selena Roan, and you are listening to Close to Death, powered by DTM Wicked Radio, and brought to you by Fear Paranormal. Man, I am extremely stoked about my guest tonight because I know everybody in the paranormal should, if you do not know, who Mr. Steve Huff is. He is from Huff Paranormal. He created the amazing app, the SCD-1, among other things, and he's also a photographer and a blogger. What's up, Steve? How are you? Hey, Selena. I'm doing great. Uh, How about you? How are you doing? I'm doing really good. I'm trying not to melt in the uh, Texas heat. I'm sure you know exactly what I mean because you're in Arizona, so it's hot. Yep, but, uh, same thing. It's really hot here all the time, but uh, I'm kind of used to it, even though I don't like it. But, yeah. You know, well, it I mean, is kind of cool there, though. It's beautiful country, though. Yeah, it's, it's nice. I, you know, I met you in Tombstone, so that was fun. You got, oh, you know, you, yeah. you were hanging out there, so you got to see that a little bit. That was cool. Yeah, I mean, well, so of the audience that may not know who Steve Huff is, which I think is probably going to be minimal, can you tell the audience a little bit about Steve Huff? <laughs> sure. Basically, <laughs> I'm a guy. Uh, I'm a basically I'm a, a photographer, a blogger. I, my business that I run is a, a camera review website that's been up for almost eight years, um, and I, I've been a I don't want to say fan. I've been fascinated by the paranormal ever since I was little. And when I was a child, I had some experiences. And as a teenager and in, in my 20s, I was more of a skeptic. I, I kind of just let it fade, and I would come up with excuses of why such and such would happen. And then I'd say about six years ago, five, six years ago, uh, I was on YouTube uh, uploading a camera video for my website. And in the recommended videos uh, panel, there was something about a ghost box. And I was like, what the hell is a ghost box? So I clicked on the video. I never heard of it, you know. So I clicked on the video, and uh, I was watching this guy who whose name was Stephen Hill. He used to post quite a few spirit box videos back then. And I was fascinated by, by what he was getting, but I was skeptical. So my thing was I'm going to, to buy one myself and try it and see if there's anything to it. And from the moment I bought uh, the very first one, I was getting communication, calling my name, telling me their names. So it kind of, uh, that's how I stumbled into the paranormal. And then it kind of snowballed into a whole bunch of stuff uh, five years later, six years later. But um, yeah, that's me. I basically do this for fun, for the passion of it. It's it's a massive passion of mine. Um, I spend a lot of time on it, but I also spend a lot of time on my actual job that pays the bills but because i love this so much it's uh just just like i said a passion that that i just want to keep doing it's kind of strange um so that's how i kind of got into it again later in life basically well you know that's the thing that that's the thing that really fascinated about me about when i first saw your videos because um you know, I had the, you know, regular SCC-7, and I and I was getting mm-hmm. kind of frustrated with it. I mean, yeah, it's pretty cool, but it was so hard for me to really, I guess, rely on what I was getting because of what it exactly is. And as Rob D. will put it, it's a damn scanning radio, okay? Yes. And, <laughs> you know, that he just said, just let's call it what it is, you know? Let's call it spade a <laughs> spade. And so that's, that's you know, kind of where he. And I, I kind of was like, yeah, but the noise was getting on my nerves, and mm-hmm. and I could, and it was really bugging me. And then when I started seeing your videos, and I was like, wow, how is this guy getting this stuff out? This is crazy stuff, and so clear. And it it just impressed me. And your passion is is somewhat similar to mine. I mean, I am. I was in a mundane kind of job for years and years mm-hmm. and years, and it took me to, you know, my early 40s to, to find the paranormal, and I'm like, wow, I love this stuff, <laughs> and I just, I live it and breathe it, and so, you know, your earliest experiences uh, that you had, I was reading, it was rather young, wasn't it? I mean... Yeah, when I was a little, just a little guy, I remember having an experience in a hotel room. I was with my parents and my sister. We were traveling... Uh, I don't know where, if we were in Kentucky or Southern Illinois, one of those 
places, and we stayed in a motel, and there were two beds, and I was pretty little, so I slept with my father because I was always afraid of uh, these motels because they were kind of shady, some of them, you know. And, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I remember laying there, and, and I just couldn't sleep. I was really nervous, so I turned on the, the lamp on the nightstand, and uh, my dad stayed sleeping. Nobody else woke up. And I was just sitting there looking around the room, and then all of a sudden, it, it had one of those doors that connect to the room next to it. Um, but my dad checked it before we went to sleep, and it was locked. So I'm laying in there, and the door opens. A man sticks his head in and looks at me, and he gives me this weird, creepy smile, and he says, do you want this? And he shook his fist at me. Now, I jump up and start screaming, and I remember jumping on my father and he wakes up and my mom wakes up and my sister wakes up and, and they go to check the door and it's locked from the inside. I mean, it, it, nobody could have gotten in. And, you know, I, I, back then I was like, I knew I didn't dream it. I knew it was real. I've never seen anything like that. Later in life, as I got into my teens and twenties, I just told myself, well, that was a dream. It had to have been a dream. Um, but there, there were other experiences as well. You know, I've had two near death experiences in life when I was younger um, and even when my father passed away in 2000, you know, I was married. Uh, my son was like one or two and, um, no, he was four. And, you know, the night my father passed away, we, um, woke up in the middle of the night because our bathroom down the hall, the sink was on full blast. It turned on by itself. The mirror was all fogged up. And, um, so I get up to turn it off and that's never happened before. And then I started hearing noises around the house, like somebody was walking. So I thought somebody broke in the house. So um, I went around and I got a big butcher knife and I'm scouring the house looking for an intruder. And um, my then wife woke up and my son got up and um, we just kept hearing like footsteps and weird noises throughout the house. So we left the house because they were scared to death. But... um, you know, we came back and there was actually a voicemail on our answering machine. It was an old answering machine, kind of with the tapes at the time. And there was a a message, but it wasn't anybody talking. It was like flute music, very soft flute music. It was really bizarre. And I I couldn't explain any of that, Um, you know, but I've had a few experiences when I was younger. um, And I was always fascinated. I would always go to the library with my mom and have her get me, you know, books on spirits or ghosts or anything out of the ordinary, werewolves and, you know, strange stuff like that, aliens. So I've always had an interest in it, and uh, somehow I feel drawn to it. And you probably do as well. I bet you feel drawn to it as well. Um, It's just something that kind of gets in you, and you just want to, you know, do these investigations, do the research, and... You know, it's really a strange phenomenon, but uh, sometimes it can borderline on um, obsession. When I when I first got into these spirit boxes, um, I remember my son and I were doing it like every night in my kitchen, and it was just like an obsession, like we had to do a session. And I think a lot of that is what um, – that's when I noticed a lot of these replies ramping up and the direct replies. And I, So I, I always think the more you do it, the more – um, replies and response you're going to get. Um, cause when I take a break for a week or two and go back to it, it seems to take a couple of days to really get back into it. But, um, so yeah, I, you know, I see a lot of people that get obsessed with it and get, I don't want to say obsessed, but they get really into it, uh, where they just want to always do sessions. So these days I kind of take breaks here and I'll take two, three days off and then I'll do two, three days. And I try to balance it out so it doesn't get too intense around the house because, the more I do at my house, the more things happen around the house. Um, and my fiance, you know, she's not the biggest fan of things happening around the house. So I try to keep it calm. <laughs> Poor yeah. Debbie. Well, yeah. well, you know, uh, you know, when you discovered that you could talk with spirits, um, how how did you actually discover that? I mean, was it just did it just it happen one day, or? Well, none of this really intensified until I started using the spirit boxes and then it then it turned into EVP and then I was on this big EVP kick where I would just go around and record you know and, and get replies out of thin air and you know EVPs are usually a lot quieter a lot harder to hear sometimes they're not um, so I started doing that and then I started noticing 
my name being said quite a lot. Like they would say Steve, Steve, and then it turned into Steve Huff. Uh, then they would start calling my father's name. You know, they would start calling um, people I knew. They called Debbie's name all the time. So it's like I think it took two or three years. And, and the way I look at it is I've built up trust with them, in my opinion, because I've always, from day one, always respected them. I always try to be polite and ask them. I don't tell them to do something. I try to ask them. I tell them they're appreciated. They still have a voice um, and that I come as a friend. So I always do that in the beginning. I don't always show that in my videos because it would be boring, but I always have this opening thing I do where I let them know that I respect them and I don't mean any harm and I'm a friend. So lately, you know, they come through calling me a friend and it's just kind of crazy. And the way these, you know, some of these new apps, that are out are doing or are performing. It's just on another level from what was happening just a year ago. So <laughs> it, it's getting more intense, I think, for everybody, you know, in this field. Oh, definitely. I mean, cause, even you. You know, when we, when we, oh my God, yes, I, I am totally, I've already been addicted to the paranormal just in general. Yeah. Um, just, just from the, the wanting to know and the needing to know. And um, I don't, I don't really want to know that Billy Bob died of, you know, TB or whatever. I, mm -hmm. I It's cool I know his name, and I, that's great. I really have deeper questions, you know, but now I'm sure. getting all these responses. with, And it's so strange because you seem to be, like when we were in Tombstone, um, mm -hmm. and thank God it was such an honor to actually investigate with you and Justin. That was so much fun. And it was weird because things were happening there that normally didn't happen uh, mm. with the app and it was kind of tripping out. And then we got the <laughs> yeah. coolest responses, but I mean, you're like a magnet. They were saying yours and Justin's name. And like I told you in Tombstone, mm -hmm. I've never ever gotten any kind of app or anything to say my name. I don't know if it's just too difficult for them, but then, you know, mm -hmm. I got home, got the SCD one uploaded and was just kind of messing around and, my kid was at school. I was like, well, I'll just try it out. So I turned yeah. it on, and, I mean, right away, and the inflection that I that I heard my name in was that of my mom's. And I'm, it wasn't wow. her voice, but it sure. was the inflection, and that's what mm -hmm. caught my ear because normally I have to slow it down like we talked about and, and listen yeah. to it back. But I heard it right away, and I, and, I mean, right after I heard it, I was like, are you serious right now? So I sat down and I re <laughs> rewound the recording and slowed it down and I went, I will be damned. And yeah. that's when I messaged you and said, okay, dude, <laughs> it said my name and you were so yeah, excited was, for me, you know, but how, are, how cool. is it that you're such a spirit magnet? I mean, I it's always I been that way though, right? <laughs> I think so. I think even when I was little and I didn't really realize it and I think that it, even when I was in my 20s and teens and all that, and I, I was kind of ignoring it and not really into it, there was still things within me. Like, I still had a love of uh, shows that had to do with ghosts or spirits. I had a love for horror movies. I have, you know, I've always been into this kind of thing, but I think it took me to really pursue it to realize um, that there was something going on with it. And I really can't explain why or how. Like I, I'm in I'm in my bedroom right now. So if I walked into my office and sat down to do a session and recorded five minutes, I can pretty much guarantee that I'll get messages. And it's it's almost foolproof lately. And I, I can't explain it. And I used to wonder like, well, why is this happening? And I used to ask myself, am I near death or something? Am I going to die soon? And you know, I'm getting a closer connect. I couldn't explain it, and I still can't explain it. Uh, so I, I attribute it to basically just um, being respectful and kind. And, you know, I, I think that the spirits respond to that. I see a lot of people who are real aggressive, and they make demands, and they yell at them and call them names. And this, these are the same people that never seem to get great evidence. So I think there's something to, you know, and also I think that they can tell um, – you know, if you're uh, if, if you're being sincere, you know, there's one thing to saying it, but there's another thing to actually do it. And I think that they can actually sense the sincerity because I am totally sincere. And you brought up Justin Spurrier. He was after Tombstone. Uh, he came to my house because um, I was driving into the airport and he stayed the night at my house. And I'm like, well, let's try a couple sessions. And we turned down a couple boxes and 
I feel he's the same way. They were saying his name, 